Let me use sus. What does that mean? Suspect? <laughs> you think I'm suspicious? Yes! <laughs> yeet? Is that how you pronounce it? I said, don't pull on my yeet. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome to our Pot to the Retirement House podcast. We're so happy to have you here. And what a trip we had. So we're going to start by telling you what it was like going to Good Morning America. Who wants to answer that question here? Who wants to describe all of our doings while we were there? Well, I'll... I'll Start with the fact of arriving at Times Square and getting out into this huge elevator. First, we had to go through security. And there's this huge stainless steel elevator that you could put in two elephants and a couple of trucks and a lot of hay. And we got in there, went up a flight, and the doors opened, and there was Good Morning America. And oh, it was it was star-studded heart. Heart, heart loving. Took your it breath was, away. It took my breath away. Yes. Anybody else? We had our own rest, uh, resting area, our own room mm-hmm. with the sign said retirement house for Good Morning America. And I enjoyed it because I got a free haircut and makeup put on us and knowing that, yeah, we're going to be on national television. Mm-hmm. That Very was exciting. special. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I, I, I stayed in the... Uh, in the makeup chair longer than I've stayed in a makeup chair <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> the girl, we, we, you know, we kind of had a thing, you know, it's a rapport. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> who, who has gotten up or when was the last time you got up at four in the morning to go to a call like that? In, in New Ve- York City, when we had to go to Good Morning America. In Vegas. <laughs> no, we stayed no, up in right. Vegas. That's we, when we were going we to bed. We gone to bed yet. Yeah, that's right. We stayed up in Vegas. <laughs> no, that was, yeah, we got in kind of late, go to bed, get up. But we had to get up earlier than that. Yeah, we got up at 3. Because weren't we in the Uber at 4.30? Yeah. 4.15. 4.15, yeah. In the Uber too. Yeah. I'll tell you one of my most exciting moments when we were there because... Our producers, directors, creators, our guys, they took us for a surprise walk after we were at Good Morning America. And they just kept us walking down the street and were looking off into the distance. And then they said, turn around. And we turned around and you won't believe, but this huge billboard in the middle of Times Square was us. That's right. Yep. It was so exciting. It, it was. was like a huge gift they had given us to celebrate our and and Jerry, work. tell us the inspiration well. for how we uh, <laughs> ended up on a billboard in Times Square. Well, this this was truly my I mean, this was my Ooh. Your, your bucket list. Yeah, this was my moment. Uh-huh. I uh, The night before we were having dinner and the producer said to me, he said, uh, Jerry, what is the one thing that you haven't done that you want to do? And I said, um, in the business, right? Yeah. So I said, I want to be on a billboard. <laughs> and so he said to me, what if I could make that happen for you? I said, I'd owe you my life. Uh oh! <laughs> wow! And the next day, as Bubby was saying, we were walking down the street. I had no idea mm-hmm. where we were going or what was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, they said, "Stop!" We stood there. We had to turn around, not face the thing. And they said, "Turn around." We turned around, and there we were on this huge. I mean, it's like fifty feet. I don't yeah. know how higher. It was. I bet it was higher. It's like yeah. two stories tall. Yeah. 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 And there we stood. And I just got shivers. I, I it just absolutely. Uh, and then he asked me afterwards, what do you owe me now? Yeah. <laughs> I said another lifetime. <laughs> yes, so. You know, and, and being on, G- on GMA is is such a big deal. I mean, after we got home, I had uh, contacts from kids. I went to like 
second and third grade with <laughs> me too. <laughs> they called and said, hey, I saw you on Good Morning America. Oh my gosh, congratulations. Yeah. yeah that's just something else. Yeah. My girlfriend from kindergarten <laughs> who go. lives in Ohio oh my called, you didn't tell me you were going to be on Good Morning America. I know, like we can tell everybody in the world, well, now they saw us and now they know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. See, I don't, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are great. You guys should cherish those moments. We, I do. I, I do. I All do. my classmates are gone. <laughs> oh. Except for the girls. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you keep in contact with is the girls, right? <laughs> that's all that's left. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'd love for... Well, man, wouldn't that be something if an old classmate would call me and say, Jerry, anything. That would just blow my... Just blow me up. Well, well Jerry, do you remember that when we were standing there, people were walking by and they were saying, wow, those are the guys that were just on Good Morning America. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When the, with the big billboard. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was great. That was but, great. But I was so into that moment, man. I just. Yeah. I there are very few moments like that in life mm -hmm. when you, you know, I. Yeah, he, he pulled that off. <laughs> well, yeah. that's dream come true material. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was. Uh, I told you I got you, Jerry. Yeah. I said I was going to make it happen, and we did. <laughs> I want to know what your loved ones thought about the Good Morning America experience. What did your wife say, Jerry? Oh, my wife, she was, uh, for the first time, you know, my wife is very, very laid back. I mean, she, um, uh, you know, she, when an earthquake happened, the first earthquake, she didn't get a gift. Was that an earthquake? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm about to <laughs> go through the ceiling, you know, but uh, I could hear it in her voice when we talked after or during New York. I was still in New York and her voice was just, she was just so happy. She thought it was the greatest thing she's, you know, ever seen, you know. Yeah, she really felt good about it. You're not just making silly TikToks anymore. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, <laughs> everybody have their opinions about those. Mm. Yeah. Uh, not everybody. I find that a lot of my friends that are my age don't have the slightest idea what social media is. Just like I didn't before I started this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just met everybody that watches them. They have a, an opinion one way or the other. That's what I was saying, yeah. But yeah, you're right about that. No, I've just had friends, high fellow high school graduates in Leland Power School I went to. Oh, congratulations, now you're a star. Now you, you, know, you deserve it, you work so hard, you made it big and yeah. it, it was nice getting the congratulations from fellow friends and so mm -hmm. forth. And, yeah. and I loved it when it said uh, retirement house takes over New York City. Mm -hmm. Right. That, yeah. was, that was great. Yeah. I was just astonished when we pulled it off. Mm. We did such a good job and yes. I was really surprised. And as we're leaving, they said to us, several people said to us who work on the show, you all have more energy than mm -hmm. any guests we have ever had on this show. That, yeah. Yes, that right in the morning. It yeah. really warmed my heart. Yeah. I, I thought, wow, live television, and we pulled it off. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, you, you, Gailey, you're so right. What was amazing also was how Strahan and his co-hosts, how they knew exactly where to cut in. The way they cut, I mean, the way they... He ended me by saying, uh, you, I said, uh, whatever I said, he s repeated it and that took me right out. Mm. It was like smooth transitions is what I'm saying. That's why they pay them the big, big bucks. bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But some people, they get stuck on stuff like that. Mm. They don't do it smooth. Yeah. You know? But that's, yeah, but good that's morning ABC yeah. National <laughs> Television. Yes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, they don't they don't mess around. I thought one of the highlights for me was just sitting in that chair and finding out how one of the best makeup people in the country would fix my face for national television. Because if you watch, they know what they're doing. And and you know, do do your hair and that and your mm -hmm. makeup that way, and 
and remember how they did it mm -hmm. and keep doing it that way because they are the best. Mm -hmm. Everyone on that program, they're not there unless they're the best in the country. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, there's just no slack there. Mm. It's so exciting to be, uh, e for me, even more than the billboard, which I loved, just seeing that level of perfection in in work is like watching the Super Bowl. It's really exciting. And mm -hmm. It was very interesting, too, because this is the first time we've been recognized by so many people when because we were together when I'm out alone, people don't necessarily recognize me even if they watch me a lot and I think that goes for everyone here but because we were touring the city together we got stopped many times oh, yeah. yes. over this oh, yeah. weekend I was shocked and flattered you know you know what shocked me was uh, we went in checked into the hotel and uh, nothing oh. next day the oh, girl yeah. is screaming <laughs> you she all were on good morning oh, America she you're in crazy. my hotel <laughs> she recognized right. us all yeah. of a sudden. And she she worked behind the desk at our hotel. And then she went next door to the hotel next door to us and, and got the manager there. Yeah. And yeah. he came running yeah. over. No, he yeah. was so excited. He wanted a picture with us, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. And then he brought someone, too. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I went down just for a cup of coffee. And the woman that was in charge of the breakfast in the hotel yeah. came running over and asked if she could have a selfie. Uh, and I'm wearing my robe and no makeup and I oh loved gosh. it. She was so sweet. And when we were in Central Park, a whole groups of people came over mm -hmm. and they reckoned, oh, 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 can we yeah. please take a picture? Oh, um, is that where we were doing the interviews? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was quite an, ex quite it's, an it's, experience. It's so nice to notice, you know, what's going on in their heads. When they're walking by, they go. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that, wasn't that good? so fun? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. That was a wonderful experience. Yeah. It really so was. We could reminisce all day, but let's switch over and include some of the fans because now we're going yeah. to answer some questions that came from fans. And I just want to tell all of you out there that you, if you go to our Instagram story, you can ask a question. And if we choose to use it, we will also say your name. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit, isn't it? We're not, we're not network television, but it's still exciting to be recognized in that way. So the very first question that I am interested in is from Jay Herdsmith, and he asks, when you're 40 and have dependable income, do you save money for later or enjoy it now? So Jay, I want to tell you that I am speaking only for myself, no one else in this room, okay? But how do you know there's going to be a later? You have no guarantee at all that you're, there's going to be a later. <laughs> but what if there is? <laughs> if there is, later will take care of itself just the way right now does. Okay? Mm. This is just my opinion. But if I were you, buddy, I wouldn't sit, or girl, whichever you are, I wouldn't sit <laughs> behind that desk forever thinking you're going to have fun when you're our age. We're lucky enough to be having fun at our age, but you're and we are not guaranteed of another later. So yeah. be sure and spend some right now. And my personal feeling is you have to work hard and play hard, too. So that's a good vision of your funds because if you don't save any for later you won't have anything to play hard with <laughs> but, unless so. you make more money <laughs> and maybe if you play hard enough you will make more money because you'll be happy in my opinion it was because i wanted to go for a goal to be a comedian be on a tv show so at 40 i i wouldn't say i had dependable income 
uh, I had enough to get by, but to go for my goal, if you want, as far as uh, being a comedian, being on television, you know, I'd save. You take your side jobs as a, a bank teller or a telemarketer to make some money to keep going so you can keep doing what you want to do. And then now, because of this show, making much better money. So now, but I'm s still not spending more because of old habits. <laughs> I'm still keeping what I have for the future. But uh, no, I'd say, yeah, enjoy yourself, but know that I think there's more to come. And if you want to go for a goal, you got to be sensible at the time and reasonable and realistic that, yeah, I better keep saving. My rent's going to go up. This is going to happen. So keep, keep working at doing what you want to do. Well, Aloysius Fourth asks us, how do you find a purpose? It's a taffy. Hmm. Huh. Well, not by just sitting around. It, it's not like you're Newton and it's going to be an apple falling on your head and you're going to go, oh, gravity, right on. <laughs> no, that, and that's not really a purpose either. But um, for myself, I found purpose just by getting out into life and doing things, living my life, doing things that I enjoyed doing. And then, of course, throughout life, you have to do a lot of things you don't enjoy. And as you're doing that, you purpose finds you. Opportunities come your way and they open doors and it's up to you to see that door open and to walk through it. It's your choice. And I think you just have to be open for it. If you're open for opportunities and purpose to come your way, it's going to come your way. If you just stay home and shut yourself off, nothing is going to happen. So open yourself to the world and let it in. And you, purpose will find you. I agree with you. And I think a lot of that comes from a half full person, mm -hmm. which you are. Hmm. That makes you happy. Yeah. And it makes the people around you happy. Generally, I wake up with a smile on my face. Me too. Because mm -hmm. you, you woke up. You made yeah, and thank no. you, my wife. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that I don't look at it like, gee, what's my purpose going to be? I don't look for a purpose. I want to do what I love to do. And as it turns out, that purpose could be to make people laugh. Hmm. And we make people laugh and make their lives better. So I guess I would consider that my purpose in life. But again... I don't look at it like, what's my purpose? I want to do what I want to do and hope it affects people in the right way, but doing what I want to do, not looking for a purpose. Hmm. My opinion. Well, I think that um, a little soul searching should go on here. I think, uh, you know, if you um, are not specific, then anything will find you. But you should allow yourself to... Um, to, 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 to discover, research, uh, listen to yourself, find out what you're passionate about. And if you're passionate about something, then do that. That could be your purpose or your call. And Clamenta, he wants to know how he can tell his dad he wants to quit law school. <laughs> but what you said goes is involved with that because go to law school but you don't that doesn't mean you have to practice law there are lots of people that go to law school and use that education to run some kind of other business mm -hmm. and you'll learn a lot by opening yourself up to law school absolutely i have a wonderful answer to the way to tell dad that i want to quit law school is dad I want to quit law school. That's our co-star, Boo. That boo. Boo. <laughs> We're not booing you folks. It's the dog's name. <laughs> and, and if you can see this dog, he's pure white. And that's why we call him Boo. <laughs> What's his name? What, 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 what breed is he? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> she is a Shiba Inu. Oh, the and Shiba the reason Inu. we call her Boo is that she was very, very timid when uh, we she first arrived, and now she's 
everyone's friend. I call her boo because I can't say Sheba Eba Numa. Olin, I may mess up this name, but forgive me if I do. Uh, Olin Tayeva ask, how do I chill and stop spending all my brain space worrying about what other people say? Now, that's a great question, and there's no pat answer to it, but I'll give you my two cents on it. You can't, if you, if you want to do something, you know, there is, uh, it's healthy to care about what people have to say, but you can't allow it to keep you from doing what you want to do. I mean, I told people that I wanted to be an actor uh, in high school, and they laughed at me. And it had a negative effect on me. It may be why my career is plateauing uh, below where it should have, uh, because I beat myself up. I put the acting thing in my pocket. I kept it there for years. It would have stayed there had I not been transferred. When I left Vietnam, I got transferred uh, the first year to the Philippines. But the second year, I got transferred to Hawaii. And um, they came to the base looking for some black guys to play pimps on Hawaii Five O, and so I that card got pulled out, and now I get on that show, and all of those naysayers they flipped. Oh, Jerry's an actor. They're telling all of the people at home, and. I wasn't any more of an actor than I was when I first said it in high school. Mm. And what it did to me, it drove me to drinking because I couldn't figure out, I couldn't figure out how I went from the negative to the positive so fast. When I had nothing, I, I, I didn't even know how to execute an actable. I, I didn't know uh, anything. I didn't know any of the terminology about the, you know, the stage, except the little stuff that I learned on that Hawaii Five-O trying to be a pimp, which didn't, you know, it didn't stay, mm -hmm. you know. All right, could you bring him downstage a little bit? I didn't know what. what? If they just told me to come downstage, I would have been lost. So the bottom line to this whole thing is you have to commit to what it is you're called to do. And you know, hey, allow that to come in. Sometimes that's healthy to get feedback from other people and hear what they think. But the bottom line is I got to do this, not you. Yes, I uh, didn't consider myself an actor silly because some people like you say, relatives would say, oh, get a real job, Joe's mm -hmm. saying. And I didn't think I was an actor till I went to my 30th high school reunion and I had done a job, I had joined the union, I got paid to act. So when they'd say, you know, you go to a reunion, oh, what are you doing now? I'm an actor. And only a couple of people still say, oh yeah, you know, but does it make, you know, make enough? I'm doing what I love to do and that's all I tell them. Don't want to argue with them. And it's like, uh, yeah, like you said, you got to do it sometimes, you just want to do it. And now I'm getting older, I really don't care what other people think. Mm. This is me. Mm. You like me? Fine. You don't like me? Fine. I'm not going to change for you. Mm. I'm not going to be someone else so that you'll think better of me. I'm being honest. This is a real me. Yes. I'm an actor. I love doing it. And it's, again, this age, you don't care. Mm. I think as you get older, you don't care what other people think. Mm -hmm. So you just got to get old and then you'll... Oh, no, you got it. You got it. You got and then, it. And then you won't that. care what others think. Yeah. You got to include some of that in, when you're younger, you know. Yeah. Because the successes in life, yeah. they do that. They don't care what nobody say. They go for it. That's they right. They go for the gusto, you know. Right. Yeah. Mm. You, you, you mentioned success. A lot of uh, the internet grandchildren have reached out to us saying congratulations on your success. And we'd be nowhere without you watching us. So can please continue to watch us on all our platforms. We appreciate it and hope you'll stay with us. 
but it made me think the word success is kind of a loaded word. So I thought that it would be interesting to explore different definitions of success, such as, can success be attained without facing failures along the way? Do you believe in the concept of fa uh, failing forward as a form of success? I do. I do too. Yeah, I mean, um, for well, for me in particular, I... <laughs> I didn't have a lot, you know, my family didn't have a lot of money growing up and whatnot. And, um, you know, which in many ways, like we all are, we're self-made. That's how I learned a lot of life was by failing. I tried a lot and failed, learned from those mistakes and went ahead and did it. And so absolutely, I, I failed forward a lot. And um, I reached the top of that mountain and went to the next one. And uh, I don't see, you know, whoever fails, whoever reaches the top um, or, or reaches their goal without failing anywhere along the line, God bless them. I mean, yeah. wow. That's, that's if you're really, perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's really a gift. I don't see how that's, for me, that's not possible or it wasn't. But... Um, Absolutely. And it's a gift to fail, too, because you not only learn that that was a failure, but you also picked up other things along the way. You meet other people, you meet other circumstances, uh, depending on what it is you're failing at. But um, some of them are joyous failures. You know, I didn't make it, but boy, that was a great time doing it. And so absolutely, you know, failing mm -hmm. forward is a a beautiful thing. Can anyone remember how many times Thomas Edison ran that experiment oh, yeah. and it didn't work? Something like 382 <laughs> or yeah. something? Yeah. One time he turned it on and it worked. But he failed all those other mm -hmm. times, but he didn't stop. It right. didn't stop him. He'd learn something. He'd change something. Yeah, it... it I, I think we put too much emphasis on success and failure. Mm -hmm. I think it's only life. How are you succeeding at life? Are you following your purpose? Are you learning to chill out your mind so that you don't care what other people think? You know, in my opinion, that's the most important thing. What kind of success are you having just being a better human, taking care, taking good care of the planet, taking good care of your children. Right. Uh, success depends on each individual, what they consider success. Uh, I'm, well, like I said, I want to be a comedian on television, TV show, something, but I'm a success now. I'm getting paid to make people laugh. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, you're so, getting paid? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Brandon. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got a raise now. I'm getting 30 cents an hour. Now, no. Uh, <laughs> 30 cents. Just wait till this show is over. I'll speak to someone. <laughs> yeah. No, and that, well, and that's the joy with these wonderful people. We have so much fun. And uh, again, getting paid for it to have fun. And it's, to me, that's if I succeeded. I have other, you know, other goals that come up, but right now in life, I'm not going to go around and say, I'm a success. Other people are saying, oh, you're a star. Yeah, yeah, on TikTok. But still, it's, we're grand influencers. We're doing well. And the important thing for me is I love life. Life is great right now, so that's all I need. Mm. Yeah, for me, it's uh, never quitting. When I um, hear stories about people like uh, Colonel Sanders, you know, the guy failed in his 60s with his chicken. Mm -hmm. and then he borrowed some money and franchised and the rest is history. That's right. You know, these, 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 you just keep, keep doing what you're doing. If you're passionate about it and you love it, it's what you want to do anyway. Well, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. It, like you said, at different times in our, in our life, too, I mean, success is different. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was 18 and out on my own, 
when I was 18 and out on my own. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, getting my first apartment. I mean, it was a shoebox of an apartment. But for me at that point, you know, other people might not think so. But for me, I was I had made it. You made it. You yeah. know, and for the first when, after that time, probably, I don't know, six, eight months later, my my paycheck made a hundred dollars a week. And I really, I really thought you were, you were I right. was a success. You're all set. <laughs> I said, was that one of the times you tried retirement? <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have been the first time I thought about retirement. But I said, boy, well, no, actually, I was thinking about all the things, the doors that were now about to open to me. Mm. And, you know, um, I was I was doing something right. I got an apartment. I was living good. I was cooking my own meals. I was keeping the place clean. I was dressing myself in good, good clothes. You know, I could go out and do something every now and then. Uh, that was a lot of money back then. Yeah, yeah, hundred bucks in a week was was pretty yeah. darn good. And yeah. Um, yeah, I considered myself a success. Mm. Now, if that had been forty years later. I'd be scraping a lot, and you know, and saying, "Well, I better not spend this." <laughs> yeah. Jeez, I got rent due in a couple yeah. of days. So, wow, it all depends. But uh, yeah, you adjust as you go through life. Things change. Mm -hmm. But I think Galen had a good point. Um, you can be very successful in the business you're in, and if you're not a good person and happy with yourself and things around you, then you're not successful. Yeah, that's well. I guess now you can split hairs on that also. Yeah, you're su you're successful in business, but you're not a happy person. Is that what you say? Right. Yeah, yeah, happiness, success. Success yeah. doesn't mean just money. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't mean just money. Right. And, you know, I, I it's, yeah, it's a hair splitter. You go on both sides of that one. And people do. You know, like people post things now just yeah. to see what kind of response they're going to get. Okay, and posting, <laughs> do you think technology and social media has changed the definition of success? Hmm. Oh, from what I just said, I guess yeah, I, I absolutely do. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I mean, because we're a big success, and I know now on social media, yes. and now on national TV with GMA, yep. but I think it has changed, because you can be, as we go looking for people who, um, when Brandon and Daniel get us, S Steve Aoki, it's like, wow, he's got this many views, this many followers, yeah, but to us, it's like, who is he? So it's ask, like, yeah, it, it's success for him, but it's like, doesn't mean everybody knows him. If you and ask I disagree. my grandchildren, yeah. they'll know they, they'll immediately. Know. Yes. The younger people do, but in disagreeing with Brandon, he calls Steve Aoki okay, the Michael Jackson of now. He's not Michael Jackson. That's a stretch. They're very yeah, different. Yeah. I, trust me, they're very different. Oh, Steve Aoki yes. doesn't even sing or dance. <laughs> He's a fantastic DJ. Yes, mm -hmm. he, fantastic DJ, great show, big show, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has changed. Yeah. Who's a big star now? It's like, who? Well, you know, in Monterey Park, I walk into the credit union. The lady goes, hi. Yeah. You were on Steve. I, I thought, <laughs> yeah. I didn't, they I see didn't even that. remember the name until yeah, she yeah. said it. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, you know, because it's a difficult name. Yeah. You know, but yeah, could, people know who he is. And now they're mentioning... You're Do on they retirement ever house. Know who he is. Yes. And they know where you're on retirement house. So retirement house is now a big name. <gasps> it, it's interesting because I live in a senior apartment building and um, a retirement course, house? <laughs> uh, did I say a retirement house? No. No. <laughs> is it like I, that? Uh, She's I, kidding you. <laughs> I'm, it's a senior apartment building. Uh -huh. In case I didn't say that. Yes. And um, that most of the people that live there are that work there are in their early twenties, mm. and they all know who I am. And oh my God, they're smitten with me, and I love every second of their attention. But two two grandchildren of a neighbor came into the. We have a bar there. Came into the bar when they found out I was on social media, they immediately looked me up and their grandmother told me the next day, they have not stopped talking about me the whole time. <laughs> so. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's fun. It is. It is. It's fun. 
but but uh, social media and um, the internet has opened up so much more of the world to any entertainer, anybody that's on the internet, that platform has just made the world so much smaller than when we were kids. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, now we are open to the world. We we went yeah. live one day and we're talking to people in India. Yeah, New Zealand. And New Zealand. All over, I know, it's, that's incredible. In a matter incredible. of, you know, a blink of an eye. We connected. Yeah. So that's not something we could have done elsewise. We used to think that the world was shrinking because we had the airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> now we have the internet. <laughs> it's <just> even faster. <laughs> it's shrinking even faster. Yeah. 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 And I love this was this last one. What advice would you give to younger generations about defining success on their own terms? And I just want to say that I've learned what so much after falling in love with you the younger generation and i want to tell you that i think you have redefined success for us and i don't think we have one thing to tell you about defining success for you because you all seem to have the most openly wonderful liberal joyous feeling about life and it inspires me just to be around you well, you know, that brings us, speaking of younger people, to the time of our podcast where we're going to teach a little bit. And it's going to be us that's going to be learning. So mm -hmm. how about if we pick up on a few words that the young people are talking? Here comes Daniel. Well, be oh, okay. be before I become savage. This is uh, oh, lock me, huh? Okay. Before I become <laughs> savage. I You're savage? Yeah, I'm savage. Okay. Do you know? And what, uh, before okay. I become savage, I just like to say that uh, you know, hey, kudos to the young generation. But uh, some of the stops, have, there's too many stops been pulled out of some things. You know, I can't condone it all. I just, I'm sorry, I don't want to sign on to that. I just can't condone it all. Okay. <laughs> well, but you, some of it's good. You could teach me, Jerry. What you said you're savage. What does savage mean? Beast. Just. Okay, you're a beast. Okay. Hold on. But not according to that. Not according to that. No. <laughs> okay. Well, Before let's... we jump right in, I just want to let the audio only listeners know that we have a whiteboard with Gen Z oh. slang written on it. Uh -huh. And the gang is about to go through it and guess what some of these words mean. <laughs> okay, gang. All, All right. So kick baby. us off. With help from our director and producers. <laughs> Thirsty is like a sex trap. A sex, sex trap? Oh, wow. Isn't what? that what it is? Can you define a sex trap? A yeah. sexy person. It's, it could be a sexy guy or a sexy girl. Or a, what, isn't that right? Can you use it in a sentence? And what's the trap? <laughs> I'm thirsty, baby. No. Um, no, uh, give me a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> she, no, she you is thirsty. You can't have a few minutes. <laughs> You're <not> thirsty. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yes. Uh, off the cuff. Anyone else have a definition? Uh, thirsty. Mm. For me well, and my generation, I don't know. No. <laughs> you need a drink of water. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'd say too too eager. Too eager? Yeah. Okay. Is Can we roll that around a bit? On? Who else agrees with uh, uh, too eager? Too eager. Somebody give me something else. Boy, I don't, thirsty. I ain't feeling that. Uh, give eager. me something else. Too eager? Too, too what? There's, yeah. The eager is the launching. Okay, you're going to go no. with that? that that's uh, desire. Much it. like, de desperate. Like desperate. Oh, eager. desperate. Okay. And it could, you know, be in a sexual way, but it could also be in a other way. So everyone's oh. right on this one. Okay. Wow. 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 Okay. One for the old timers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's especially it. for guys and girls. So if there's a guy that's doing the most trying to get a girl's attention, yeah. he's a little thirsty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, he's, yeah, he's thirsty. Dude, back what do you guys think thirst trap means? A little off topic, but. Thirst trap. Thirst trap. I, that's why I defined thirsty as I did. Aren't they the same thing? Close. That's Close. the guy that's Someone laying in the to cut for no. No, that was uh, me. I, I get a no. I, I, I'm thinking dry gulch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
don't know. I'm thinking of a club that's just wide open. <laughs> Karen, what do you think a thirst trap is? Oh, yeah. There you go. What did he say? A club that's wide open. Uh, interesting. Club? It's not quite. Do you have thirst any guesses, trap. Galen? I don't. A Some thirst trap is like a photo that someone posts on social media to get attention Legend. from like the opposite gender, usually. Oh. She oh. likes a strip club. Oh. Not but a strip club, not but like a bikini photo could be seen as a thirst trap. But it may of, not even be their photo. You, yeah, you mean like on a dating thing? But it's still Yeah, a, or if I go on Instagram, if I'm a girl and I go on Instagram and I post a photo in a bikini, it could be seen as a thirst trap because yeah, I'm yeah. trying to get the guys eager to like right, want right. me, you yeah. know? And you yeah. know what? Even though it's not directed to you, it makes you thirsty. Mm. And that's not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's the Speak for yourself, sir. Is that, <laughs> is that why you're always so parched? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Jerry's married. Chuck's not. Yeah, Chuck's yeah, not. Chuck's 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 not. Just I just look to say, oh, okay. I can look, but don't touch. Nope. That's one I nope. use as an older person. Thirst trap. Yeah. Oh, she's okay. just a thirst trap. That's it. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'll use that one. That's a good one. Okay. Mm. So one. Gucci has to be about fashion, doesn't it? I think it's like what she said, dripping with chains and which one? That's which clothes. Which Is one are we talking about? Gucci. Gucci. Oh, Gucci. Either that or it's someone that is superficial in the way they they dress you know trying to impress somebody uh wearing something that's a little far out in order to be a thirst trap (laughs) i mean not not wrong i would say it derives from the fashion brand gucci but it's actually just slang for like good or like cool Oh, it yeah. is good. It's yeah. top shelf. Yeah, like, oh, we're Gucci. Like, yeah. we're good. Ooh, Gucci. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're good. Gucci. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're Gucci. I won't use, I'll use thrust strap, but I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to use Gucci. But yeah, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. We be Gucci. Yeah. Okay. So, next one, bu- Bubby. What's that right I above really Gucci? had one. It's what is that one right above Gucci? Sus. 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 Sus? S-U-S. Yeah, and we've heard that before, but, you know, that's one of the things about growing are you, older. Are you sus? Yeah. <laughs> Bubby, Bubby, you're sus. What does that mean? You're sus. All right, I'll take that. <laughs> Suspect? <laughs> what is Could sus? Be. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's short yeah. for suspicious. Yeah. Suspicious. Yeah. Oh. Suspicious. Oh, you think I'm suspicious? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> you can say thank you. <laughs> That's, That's all that is, short for suspicious. Suspicious. I yeah. never would have gone there. Oh, he's mm. sus. Mm, 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 sus. Mm. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Sus? sus? Yeah. Mm, that's it's also cool. like, like something that's sketchy or like. Oh, you know, suspicious. Yeah. Oh, she's suspicious. sus. Uh, she's sus. Cool. Well, we got that one. She's sus. Okay, how about lit? In our days, lit was like. You're high, you're, yeah. you're drunk, you're out of it. Oh, yeah, no, that's not it, it today. You're, okay. you're looking uh, good. You're, you're still light up though. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be lit. Yeah, okay. there's light all okay. around. I'm okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, sure, I am. Is that what lit means? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're spot on. And you can also use it like that party is lit. Yeah, the club awesome. is lit. Yeah, it's like club awesome. So that's the new awesome. Party party. party. And okay. that's lit. We got one. Okay. A thirsty. Yeet? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeet. Yeah. Yeet. I'm trying to think of when I heard yeet. I've never heard yeet. <laughs> yeet. 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 It's a mouse. Did you eat yeet? <laughs> not with a K, yeet. with a T. Yeet. Yeet. Don't pull on my yeet. yeet. I'm not good at this. Yeet. Yeet. What'd you say, Monterey? I said, don't pull on my yeet. <laughs> <laughs> that could be something dirty, but you don't know it. Oh, these clips are going to be amazing. It's yeah. not dirty, don't worry. <laughs> not even close. Okay. It's not enough to grab. <laughs> Like, like an exclamation, like if I was like, "Hey guys, lunch is here," and you're like, "Yee!" Yeah, like you're excited. Oh, yay! Yeah. It's an exciting phrase. Oh, yeah. yee! Yeah. It's our yay! Yeah, yeet! Yeet! Okay. yeet. That's, that's, all we, that's what we should have yelled when the the thing came down in Times Square. Yee! Yeet! yeet. <laughs> 
<laughs> or is that how how we yelled when we were coming down the strat? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Down okay. the what? Down the strat in Las oh, Vegas. Oh yeah. yeah, you guys. Or me on the on the cruise ship. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You were yeah, saying you, you didn't even yeah. know it. Mm, mm, it's anyway. also, I think, like a verb. Like if I punted a football, yeah. I could say that I yeeted that football. Whoa. Or like you yeeted yourself off the strat. Yeah. In Vegas. Wow. That's right. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, I want to hear you guys start incorporating these in your lingo. Oh, in the oh yeah. Get right on that. So yeah. Yeah. We'll forget the words by tomorrow. I know. It's okay. Yeah, to keep this board and every week. <laughs> Review every word and see how many we've remembered. You're gonna have pop quizzes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thirsty. Well, you, now, now Bobby, thirsty and I what? Will what about, what about you flex? and Galen should know flex. Flex? Flexible? I don't know what it is. <laughs> you don't know what it is. I no. mean you use sus for suspect, so so flex what is could be. what is flex think about someone that's like at the gym that's like looking at themselves in the mirror and they oh. start like flexing all their muscles oh, oh flex. it's to like show off or show boast up. about something like okay. oh in love oh. with yourself yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah. 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 if i pull up to the club in a ferrari i'm flexing on you okay ah, show it right. off. okay so it is flexing. And what is when uh he's kai, just flexing kai called me once or he put something on me he said oh you're flea and i think that, that's new york lingo oh new i york think it's lingo. like cool Oh, okay. I, now yeah. I sound okay. Next past time, my generation. Next time we're going to have to do East Coast, West Coast. No, yeah. is there, oh, we're bringing them here is, soon. Trust yeah. me. Is there we a will. difference between the East Coast and I West would, Coast? I would bet. Definitely. Really? I would bet. Absolutely. <laughs> Even with all this technology and everything else, and everybody's so close now, technology brought us all together. There's still East Side, West Side. Uh, yeah. And then if you take it down south, you're going to hear something that you don't understand and you've never heard before. <laughs> well, Glorilla told us that. Yeah, yeah from Tennessee. She, yeah. 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 You know what? She it was interesting how her southern worked. She could be so, you know, regional anywhere from anywhere. Mm. She was and at adorable. the end of the sentence, she go say it would go back. <laughs> yeah. 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 She would revert back. I don't know. It just was interesting. I found her. Well, interesting. you know, a little tidbit about how the mind works when it comes to that. If you're if if you're you're speaking another language that's not your birth language, your second language, and you always count in your head. You always count in your native tongue. Wow, that's wow. interesting. Yeah, you always count in your native tongue. What about dreaming? I've heard of the same thing. I would think so, sure. Because that's... What? You dream in your native True language, self. I've yeah. heard, even if you speak multiple. Yeah. So I've heard, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's why it's always barking and stuff in my dreams. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of things don't translate. Like, uh, boo, I mean... I watched Clutch Cargo. You remember that scene? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the dog on there, everybody else was speaking Japanese, but the dog barked universally. Yes, that's true. I don't know the name. I did not going off track here, but if anybody <laughs> remembers the name of that particular type of animation where it's drawn animation, except the lips are always there. They always put the lips in. So there's a circle on the, on the, and somebody's real mouth is there oh. speaking the words. Oh, they used to do that in SpongeBob. That creeps me out. Always did as a kid. I thought it was so bizarre. Well, one of these days we're going to have to have a discussion about watching people do that with AI. I've seen two things now mm. where the people are talking, but you can tell if you look really closely, you can tell that they aren't quite in sync. saying the word that you're hearing. It isn't quite their voice and that they have used AI to give you the impression uh. that they are saying one thing when they are really saying whatever the person who used the AI wants them to say. Yeah. And that really creeped me out. Sure. Well, sure. like bad anime, bad, bad dubbing. <laughs> Has anybody seen LeBron James trashing the Lakers because of the loss in Denver? That's got to be AI because he's throwing them all under the bus. Ah. Says a, 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 uh, AD had the best three quarters of his life and he disappears in the fourth quarter. 
and he talks about Russell. He talks about each one of them. And I know that he is not saying that. No. And they're still in the series. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think we're going to be seeing more and more of that. Yeah. And, and they just had one with Eon Musk mm -hmm. saying, you must do you, join me and learn how to make $500 a day. And I will teach you all of this. And and I thought, he's not really saying this. He's not paying attention to this. This is AI. Somebody oh, sure. is trying to get people to sign up for a service yeah. by using AI. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it, I found it very... Uh, Creepy? Flex. <laughs> or sus. Very, very sus. sus. Very flex. It's, it's sus. Our, actually, in Suspense. our day. Sus. Yeah, very in, sus. In our day, when they had newspapers that had advertising and ads, that want ads in the newspapers, a whole section all to, to itself where it bought and sold things and whatnot. And uh, they had ads for jobs. And under the jobs, there was always this one ad that was like, how to make a million dollars. Send one dollars to P.O. Box 55555, Illinois. You know? That's right. It yeah. didn't say it who was out. going to make a million dollars. Yeah. No, it turned out you got a note back, if you did get the note back, that said, easy, put an ad in the newspaper saying how to make a million dollars. Send one dollar. <laughs> you know, in, in Birmingham, but, Alabama, wow. they, they used to um, uh, promote car sales. And the announcer, he was really clever, you know, oh, sort yeah. of like, uh, what was the guy used to come on with the dogs and the lions and all of oh, that? Well, yeah. Cal? Cal, Cal Worthington. Cal Worthington. Yeah. Well, this was Hi, the Cal Worthington of the South. <laughs> and he said, just bring me 900 bananas and I'll give you this car today, right now. <laughs> right now. And some guy showed up with 900 bananas and they had to give him the car. That's right. Yeah. He gave him the, they made him. The, they didn't made say him. the car ran. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> the guy got the car for 900 bananas. There you go. Wow. Okay. You know, I don't know how much the bananas were cheap. <laughs> how did he carry them? <laughs> he had Pick up there with a truckload of bananas. <laughs> he got that car, though. Yep. Yeah, that was a big story in Alabama at the time. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> See, there were even scams then. Yep. Oh, God, yeah. Now it's getting more technical scams. Oh, it's And terrible. there's more of them. Because everyone can get on and just. You know what the biggest scam was for me when I was growing up? And because I was a little boy and I was adventurous and I'd find this stuff. And it was every, it was not frequently. Every once in a while you would have a and they would drive the person up. Uh, this car over into the black neighborhood and leave it. <laughs> Make it look like a black person oh. killed. Oh, with the uh, body in it? Huh? With the body, with the body in it? it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's that was terrible. the creepiest yeah. thing ever. But that's terrible. Yeah. They, they, you know, they finally figured that out. Actually, when wow. I was a kid, where I live, where I grew up, it was, um, well, it was Land's End. And there was a big parking lot below the house um, called Inspiration Point and a big monument to the USS San Francisco. And below that was just, you know, it was Land's End. It was where the land met the ocean. So people used to come out and would dump things like that. You know, they, they'd, uh, they'd dump a body. Oh. Um, as, as, a, as a kid, by the time I was 12, I found three dead people. Oh my oh, God. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first one, I was probably like eight years old. Oh, okay. and I thought the guy was just asleep in the bushes, you know, and I told my mom and she she came down and looked and then she called the cops. Um, Didn't the freak you out? Were, uh, pardon me? Didn't freak you out? Um, I, I, I was more curious than freaked out. Okay. And um, just because of the way, well, that's a long story. But um, then the other was was in a car. Mm -hmm. He had committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And the third one was another one that just laying against a tree. Mm. You know, Jeez. and that was by the time I was 12. Oh, wow. And, um, of course, I was a turnkey kid, so I was always in places I probably shouldn't have been. But, mm. yeah. 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 Huh. I mean, that's that's crazy like that. My uncle, we were uh, 
you know, it was reaping crop time, you know, and we were hauling the corn from the field to the barn. And he's, he's down on the ground, backing the mules up to where we're going to unload the corn. Fell dead right there, just died. He, and I didn't know. know what to do with the mules. I didn't know. I was a little fella. I didn't know what to do with nothing. I was just, God, that's the worst thing you can have happen to you. What, what, what did you do? Well, the, well, the mules stopped. Luckily, yeah. the mule stopped. And I started screaming, Daddy. Mm. Daddy! <laughs> and I finally got his attention. And the house was like, you know, I don't know, a football field away. Wow. Yeah, you know. Mm. So, yeah. Ooh, crazy stuff. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's just life is just like that. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I think I told this story before, but th this kind of lends itself to it. My sister, Virginia, she tried to fly. And oh, yeah, uh, yeah the I told the story. But the part of it I want to underscore now is that, you know what? If she'd have broke bones, knocked herself out. We had no way to get her to the doctor. Yeah. Or or yeah. maybe they wouldn't even have taken you. That's right. Oh no, the emergency vehicle wouldn't pick up blacks. Yeah. And so, and 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 Bessie Smith died outside an ET because they wouldn't let her in. Yeah. They couldn't yes, bring her in. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, uh, this one quick note, that happens to white folks too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I broke my back, yeah. I fell off a three story building. Uh, How did you do that? Another long story. Uh, <laughs> I, so I, I fell off, you know, and I was and everything on the way down. Still got the scars to show it and whatnot. But anyway, so I'm laying there and uh, with the broken back. I tried to get up, got about halfway, and then realized something was really wrong. Laid back down. And um, my partner at the time. Monterey, Monterey. Monterey. And uh, so she called the ambulance. And the ambulance says, Where are you? Nobody lives out there. No, nah, nobody lives out there. And she called and they hung up and they thought it was she was a crank call. So she called back again. And they said, Look, okay, what's the nearest intersection? How far away is that? Okay, well, you meet us down there and oh my then God. we'll go up and get him and it was probably 45 minutes later that the ambulance showed up <laughs> oh my met God. her way down the corner which was probably five blocks six blocks maybe away at least wow. and you know she had to go through the forest and down through the road and everything else then go down to the corner and and then they came up and they got me but you know, it's a good thing these weren't bleeding that much. You know, or you would have been dead, anything, yeah. or I would have been dead. Well, you know did what? they have any regrets about making you wait so long? I, I, I didn't get a chance to ask. <laughs> ask I, you know, the the next thing I remember after that was being on a gurney in General Hospital, and six people are talking at me. And somebody is going up the insides of my leg with a sharp object going, can you feel this? Can you feel this? Can you feel this? And I'm going, and I'm trying to answer them. And I'm going, of course I can feel that. Would you leave me alone? <laughs> wow. Well, you know what you did. You, um, I mean, had you not gone through that. Yeah. They would still be doing that today. Oh, sure. But these people have learned. You know, you got to be real careful before you pronounce something a prank and nobody lives there. Yeah. You got to check that out, man, yeah. because yeah. people are walking. These people go on these walks by themselves. Oh, yeah. And wind up in a gorge and it's freezing. I don't know if I'm that brave. Yeah. Well, this last I, winter. I, yeah. You know what I always say? I have to tell this on myself. <laughs> My wife said, well, what was the guy doing up there by himself like that? I said, well, he's white. <laughs> white people don't close their curtains. They don't. They, I said, well, you know, this is what black people think. They yeah. said, white people don't close their curtains at night. They don't close their blinds. <laughs> no, they want the whole world to see. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and it's nothing bad. It's, it's like, it's like, man, if I don't close my curtains, I can't see out for the light inside. Uh -huh. And that's that's spooky to me. I, mm. If I shut the lights off, then I'm okay. But boy, you know when you turn the lights on inside and it's dark outside, 
people can see in, but you can't see out. In a fishbowl, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, right. that's kind of crazy to me. But anyway, I don't know why I'm sharing these. Okay. <laughs> we want to thank you for watching. Continue to watch and follow us on Retirement House at TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, uh, Snapshot, Spotify, Twitch. I can't keep track of all of them. <laughs> But we're everywhere. Please continue to watch us. Thank you for watching us now and tune in next time.